Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Right, so before I continue just to say thank you, big thank you to Um, let me have a look. Who am I saying thank you to? <laughs> Give me two seconds. I want to say thank you to everybody because, and I mentioned this, <clears throat> oh, my voice is going. I mentioned this the other day uh, about the statistics. I keep going on about my statistics, but I just find it interesting, really. That's all. So this month so far, it's really gone up. <clears throat> God, my throat's got all weird. Yeah, I'll be all right. So this month, really, let's just say this current current month says so January, and the stats have just really risen. sort of gradually over the month we've had a couple of low days like like statistically wise like the 1st of January is the first uh, Wednesday the 1st 2020 I had 2009 downloads but that's the lowest day of all out of the whole month and it's a sick it's the 17th today so it's 24 minutes past midnight on the 17th of January 2020. So I started off the month and you know, the 2nd of January 2,564 and then the 6th of January it went really high for some reason. Um, I remember I wasn't quite sure why it was 5,528 5, downloads which is a, a lot higher than normal the next day was 4,187 and then it went down to 3,077 like 3,777 but every day after that it's pretty much been above 3,000 apart from the 12th which is 2,645 but since then, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's just, it hasn't gone below 4,000 downloads for the day. So Monday I had 4,368 downloads. Tuesday, the 14th of January, 2020, 4,232 downloads. Wednesday, the 15th of January, 4,270 downloads. And then yesterday, and the day's not over yet, uh, I think it, it finishes at one o'clock in the morning. It's now at 4,965 downloads. And afterwards, actually, they don't calculate it exactly until the next day. So it'll probably be over 5,000 for that day. And I'm just, I don't know, it excites me. I'm sorry. I know it's, it's really a bit sad, but um, but is it really? If you spent all your time and you devote your energy to doing something, it's nice to see that it's being, or it's growing in uh, strength or success or listeners or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, nearly 5,000 yesterday. Um, and, you know, over 4,000 the last three days before that. And so yeah, so literally one, two, three, four, five, six days 
out of the last 16 days has been over 4,000 and two of them have been over 5,000 or there will be because if the, yesterday's 4,965 will definitely be above 5,000 when I wake up tomorrow or later today so I thought I'd just let the reason I'm letting you know is because you're responsible for this not just you but other people that are listening maybe that listen to the other podcasts that maybe don't listen to this one and I'm just really really pleased so yeah so thank you because without you listening to my podcasts, to my recordings, going on my website, and all that stuff, there'd be no reason for me to do this at all. So, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you. And even, it's quite weird, because last month, like in December, I had the highest downloads of the year, which is kind of kind of should be really in, in my in my in my brain it should be because it's the 12th month but I started the year last year 12,996 downloads for January 2019 and I ended up with in December 2019 with 66,528 downloads and so far I'm halfway through the month and I've had 56,388 downloads. So there's a good chance I'm going to reach, you know, 90,000 plus for this month. Which is, you know, every doing that every month, it's over a million a year. So, but I'm expecting it to grow even more. I can't wait there because at, at the moment I'm looking at the the stats on the screen and you know it's in a not a pie graph what's the one where you got the the sticks or the this is a maths thing so although it's also used in geography and what's well, using lots of things isn't it as a graph but you know it's on the right hand side at the bottom it's got January to, to December or January to January actually and on the left hand side going up it's got numbers like 20k 40k and 60k now I can't wait until on the left hand side it's then got 150k 180k and the graph has just grown that'd just be so cool so yeah so I look and I think, well, what ones are actually, why am I getting this rise? Well, the deep sleep whisper hypnosis recordings is definitely a reason for that. Because I've been making them regularly for the last few days. And <clears throat> this, uh, so what days? Well, I say for the last three days actually. So I did one on the 7th of January, one on the 14th of January, one on the 15th, and one on the 16th. And I will do one today as well. So this week. Uh, Monday I had 504 downloads Tuesday the 14th of January 657 downloads Wednesday the 15th of January 616 downloads and Thursday the 16th of January yesterday 733 downloads that's just of that podcast the Deep Sleep Whisper so I'm, you know, fairly pleased with that. Oh yeah. So that's groovy. So to be getting 
700 plus downloads just on one podcast considering how many podcasts I've got I think is really cool and then there's the hypno what other podcasts have I got let me bore you to sleep so the one here that I'm doing I last the current week okay so I get less can you believe it I get more deep sleep whisper hypnosis uh, downloads than I do the let me boy to sleep but um, Monday I got 423 downloads Tuesday 362 downloads Wednesday the 15th of January 359 downloads and yesterday I got 344 downloads and I generally seem to be doing one every day in fact I have every single day this year so far I've done a new let me boy to sleep apart from the 3rd of January I didn't make one but I did one first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, and all that, all the way up. And so, yeah. So, yesterday, 344 downloads. So, I'm, technically, I'm getting half the amount of Let Me Boy to Sleep downloads as I am with the other, uh, the Deep Sleep Whisper. But. But, 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 let's have a look at what other ones. Relaxation, hypnosis for stress and anxiety. I've been releasing some 12. Yeah, well, I've done um, one on the 8th of January, one on the 9th, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I've been doing these kind of on a daily basis for the last few days. Uh, and that's because this is one of my most popular podcasts. Even though it hasn't got the most overall downloads, because I'm at 69,961 downloads for the whole podcast. On a daily basis, here's what I'm getting. So on the Monday, the 13th of January... 822 downloads Tuesday the 14th of January 832 downloads Wednesday the 15th of January 834 downloads and yesterday the Thursday the 16th of January 1033 downloads so technically that is more popular Get more downloads on that podcast than I am the other two podcasts. So this one's, although it's not in the front, if you was thinking of it as being the overall races in a season, you know, it's definitely not ahead because it's on a much lower download over a period of time. But if this was just one of the races, it's well ahead. Of the other two podcasts so I'm pleased with that uh, what other one is there so uh, do, 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 do. sleep hypnosis weekly now I've managed to do two weeks in a row which is good I'm pleased about but I have a tendency of uh, not doing them as regular I mean I'll give you an example 28th of October 2019 the next one was 5th of November the next one was 14th of December and the next one was the 10th of January so and then I did one yesterday um, but again this is growing <clears throat> so yesterday I had 272 downloads of um, this podcast Monday 205 downloads 
Tuesday the 14th, 148. Wednesday the 15th, 189 downloads. 272 yesterday. And it's because I only do one, one a week. Well, sometimes one a month, but it's supposed to be one a week. So I'm quite pleased with the fact that I'm getting, and there's not that many episodes. There's only 31 episodes to listen to. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased, actually, with that podcast as well. And the other two podcasts I've got is what other ones have I got? Me, me. Which ones have I got? Me. Um. Okay, these are the bigger podcasts, but there's a mix. These are my sleep insomnia. So, sleep insomnia hypnosis. Monday, I had seven hundred and sixty-nine downloads. Tuesday the 14th, 954 downloads. Wednesday the 15th of January, 751 downloads. And yesterday, Thursday the 16th of January, 1019 downloads. And if you think about the let me bore you to sleep recordings there's pretty much just as many downloaded on this podcast as everyone is on the other one on the deep on that one so if that makes sense there's a lot more being downloaded than seems than it seems to be of each podcast but they're just on other people's pod not other people's but other podcasts and it kind of made sense before I said it out loud Lastly, this is, I think this is the most popular one, 131,066, Sleep Insomnia Hypnosis. Or is it the same one? No, it's a different one. 769 downloads on Monday the 13th, Tuesday the 14th of January, 954 downloads, Wednesday the 15th, 751 downloads, and... Thursday the 16th of January 1019 is that what I just said I can't remember is it it might be what one was that that was oh that was 131,066 no I have got a higher higher numbered one hypnosis of sleeping deeply this is 141,829 total oh yeah these these are bigger numbers sorry I just repeated myself I do apologise um, so this is hypnosis for sleeping deeply has all the sl- has all my sleep sessions on there whether they're whisper the weekly ones, deep sleep whisper, or the let me bore you to sleep. Uh, One hundred forty-one thousand eight hundred twenty-nine. Can't wait for that to reach a two hundred thousand. That's groovy. Get excited. Uh, Monday the thirteenth was one thousand one hundred thirty-six downloads. Tuesday the fourteenth of January, seven hundred fifty-four downloads. Wednesday the fifteenth. January uh, 1,117 downloads and Thursday the 16th of January 1,104 downloads so you can see how the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic is actually starting to play with the big boys or the big girls on the out of the podcasts starting to be very competitive which is kind of exciting really I suppose kind of kind of I 
think. So yeah, overall my podcasts I've had 702,225 downloads. 702,225 with 22,465 total plays. So yeah, I'm pleased with how it's going. Just need to get that to the million. Just for my own pleasure, you know. I think it'd be really good. So, um, I was going to say something earlier, but I've got no idea what it was. Da, 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 da. Right, I've been thinking about telephone boxes. Now you may think, why? It doesn't matter why. I'm just, just that's what I've been thinking about. It's none of your business why. Now actually the reason for it was I went um, <clears throat> I went to the farm shop today because I didn't have I didn't really there were certain things I didn't have um, I didn't have any margarine or butter so I bought some butter bought a sausage roll and a cake and then I or oh, well before that I got myself a mouse deterrent uh, it's this thing that you it lets off a high frequency to deter mice so I put it into the storage room and it's got batteries in it so it doesn't have to be plugged in or anything like most things that have batteries in them. And I went up to the counter to pay for it. I think it was like £9.99 or something. And I said, have you got any batteries? And she, the lady said, what, what does it take? So I take my glasses off to, to see her because she was way too close I couldn't focus no she was and she, I said I looked at the box and I said oh double A and she said oh okay and I said do you, do you sell back she said yeah they're there uh, she said which one do you want she pointed to two uh, those ones are pretty much the same both the same price just different makes I said oh I'll take that one then I took the Durex ones and she I put them in the box you know what box put them in my bag rather I don't carry a box around unless I want to reach the top shelf and I took it home ripped open the, the battery box thing you know, you know the lid bit which they hang it up with and she'd given me treble A's not, not double A's treble A's which meant they were too small Which meant I, it's like I just spent probably I don't know four pound or maybe even six pound I can't remember on these batteries for nothing. It's like ah, uh? and uh, luckily my friend he had some batteries so he let me have have three, and I put this thing into the storage room and I'm hoping it does the business because. I don't have mice running around it. Andre is a pretty big deterrent against uh, any kind of vermin running around. You know, he, he'll have them. He will, and also, he lets off a stink as well to deter them. They don't want to be in this flat. The only, the most they'll want to do is try and maybe get into a cupboard to get some food and then run off again. So in the kitchen cupboard underneath the sink, it's empty in there, but occasionally, not very often, I'll go in there and check and there's a few little mouse droppings. So there has been a mouse in the cupboard, which means it can also get into the other cupboard at the bottom, but there's no food in there either. 
which is a bit annoying that I've got two cupboards that I can't actually put anything in. It's like, you know, I'm not living in a mansion. I do need the storage that I've got. So it's a bit of a shame. So I, I might get another one of those alarm things and stick it in the kitchen. Uh, maybe put another one in here in the, as well. But I've only ever seen a mouse once, or a mouse, and it got trapped in the living room. It didn't want to be in here. But this was like a couple of years ago. And I don't know how it ended up in this room. It must have just wandered in. Just, I don't know, just having a little look around. And then suddenly um, confronted with me and Andre. And it tried to get out. I closed the door so it couldn't get out, just so it couldn't get to any other part of the flat. And it was scratching and biting at the door to get out. It really did not want to be in his flat, which is quite a good thing. You know, that a mouse or m mouses, they're not, they're not prepared to make my home their home because Andre, this is his home and they're not going to want to be around him. You know, he's, he's cute as anything but he turns into an animal sometimes. Well, he is an animal, isn't he? But he's, you know, he's a little bit uh, territorial. I got asked uh, earlier that sort of someone said, oh, you don't, don't talk about Andre, I haven't spoken about him much. Well, I think at this time of the year, well, not think, I kind of know, this time of the year he sleeps a hell of a lot. He's almost in some kind of hibernatory sort of mode. Although he's not hibernating, obviously, but he's he sleeps for much longer periods of time and he's maybe awake for a couple of hours a day. You know, intermittently. So he might be up for half an hour, running around, and then he'll go back to sleep. I get up another half an hour later on, run around and go back to sleep. And he's been asleep all day, pretty much. I saw him a couple of times. He's just fast asleep. He just loves being asleep. And especially in this time of year, sort of in the winter. And another thing he does is he likes to sleep near the radiator in the hallway. But just what he likes is he's in control of the distance. And he just gets a right, a, a right measurement that suits him and he goes to sleep. Plus, he's near the storage room where he wants to get to the mice if there are ones in there. He's constantly trying to get in there. And he's also near the front door so he can, I suppose, guard, guard his home, I suppose. I say his home. The one, I'm the lodger. He's, he's the landlord. But other than that, he's been pretty good. He gets, he has little... Um, he's got this thing where he wants me to chase him. He's like, chase me, chase me. And he, he runs, he looks at me. And then I go near him and he runs away and he hides behind the cooker. Because he loves being able to hide where he knows I can't get to him. I could, I'd just pull the cooker out and grab him if I had to. But, you know... Generally, I can't fit beyond the cooker. I'm not quite that slim. I am incredibly slim, but not quite that slim. I am probably the slimmest person you'll ever meet, but not slim enough to get through the gaps between the cooker and the counter. I am. I'm basically like a like a flat bit of cardboard. That's kind of <laughs> nothing like that. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Uh, 
So yeah, he's he's good. He's all right. He, we've now come to a, a kind of a, a silent agreement that I don't lock in. Well, not lock in, but I don't close any of the doors when I'm in bed. Because I used to. I went from putting them in a cage to putting them into the living room with the door closed. And the reason I did that is because he wouldn't leave me alone. He'd be nibbling my at my face, trying to wake me up because he wanted to play. But now, as I now let him, so I close the door and used to lock him, not lock him, but he can't get to the door handle and open it. Um, and he didn't like that. He didn't like being in one room and he does not like closed doors. Really doesn't like it. So we've real, got a real issue with that. If it's, a do if it's a closed door, he wants to get through it. Doesn't want anything the other side. He just wants the door to be open. And he does, he does a little um, patrol around the flat. He does, he goes into every room sometimes, goes into the bedroom, comes in the living room, looks around, goes into the kitchen, he goes into the bathroom, and then walks up to the hallway, up to the front door. He just wants to look around to make sure his home is how he wants it to be. Make sure there's no undesirables. It's just ridiculous. He's... I think it's a bit of a control freak, actually. I think. But now, he leaves me alone when I'm in bed. I mean, sometimes he'll climb up um, and come to bed with me, you know, sleep with me. Or sometimes he'll already be asleep and he'll just, you know, cuddle up, or not cuddle up, but he'll... Um, he prefers it at the bottom of the bed sometimes he will come a bit closer and he'll lay on my hand which I really like it's all, I don't know it's, it's him just, just being loving I guess but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me anymore though he doesn't uh, try to wake me up just leaves me to sleep I go to bed at I don't know 6 in the morning and he leaves me alone he does his thing and if he wants to play he plays and yeah sometimes he wakes me up because he's scratching on the carpet or doing stuff you know being naughty but I just have to prepare for him because if I leave anything on a table, so I've got three flat surfaces in the living room. Uh, I've got a little table thing. You know those tables that you have, you can have on your bed. You know, it's got the, uh, a thingy underneath that pushes under your bed so you could have your breakfast. I guess it's similar to the kind of things you have um, at hospital. It's one of those, but like a, well, I guess a smaller version of that. And ironically, I got that the day, I bought that and had that delivered the day that the mouse appeared. I got those delivered on a Thursday and the mouse appeared on a Friday. How weird is that? I remember that date because I thought it was, uh, it was a delivery. They delivered a little mouse with the rest of the stuff they delivered. Anyway, there's that flat surface, and I usually have bits on there, like TV, remote control, a few other little bits, maybe a plate that I've been eating off of. And then I've got another table, which is like a foldy uppy one, but it's a bit higher, and it's just handy for storage. Just, I've got it underneath my punch bag and it's useful for putting next to the other chair 
when I'm making a recording so that I can put the uh, like a drink on it and you know because I don't always make recordings sitting at the laptop like I am now in fact it's quite rare I don't make many recordings where I'm sitting at my desk I'm usually sitting in a chair usually sitting in a big black squeaky chair but I'm trying to move away from that and sitting in the other chair which isn't squeaky but isn't as comfortable so it's kind of you know um, but the thing is if I leave anything on those flat surfaces Andre climbs onto the chair and then knocks them off he has to knock stuff onto the floor it's like he doesn't have a choice just as I'm speaking about him he runs out of his little sleepy place and uh, manages to find a way to make sound <laughs> should we call it sound an increased volume of sound uh, He looked up at me as if to say, what are you looking at? I've not even taken him out for a walk for a few days. It's so windy, wet, cold for him. I've not found it to be too cold for myself, but it has been windy and quite wet. And I'll take him out. If it's not raining, I'll take him out for a walk. And I have to carry him. Eventually, I put him down on the grass as we're heading towards the park. And sometimes he won't even get as far as the park before wanting to turn back. There's been times when I've actually took him outside the front, put him down straight away he's turned back to come back home doesn't doesn't want to be outside and I kind of feel like I'm, I should force him to do it really for his own good to you know, get outside some exercise some you know fresh air and stuff but he just doesn't doesn't want to and he digs his heels in, like literally, digs his heels. He, I have to drag him. So I've got this in you know, a harness that I've got on him with a lead, and I'm pulling, and he's literally being dragged along. And of course, I don't want to do that on a pavement. And get away with doing it on the grass, because he just slides along. But he chooses to do that. You know, I don't I don't walk very fast. So he can walk at any time. His legs work. That's a hundred percent. So he chooses to be dragged along and it looks and sometimes I forget I forget to look back to see how he is. So I'm just walking at my pace and I look over, I realise that he's just Basically, he's on his back with his legs in the air, looking up at me, laughing. Just you know, nah, he can't, can't make me do anything. Honestly, if he could wear roller skates, he would. Really, he would. So it gets to the point where I just, I just carry him. Although he does let me know. He puts his hands up on my leg to let me know he wants me to pick him up so he's got that communication with me um, there's a few other bits that he lets me know and when he wants to get down he lets me know as well sometimes it's verbally oh, get off me let me down you're not my real dad <laughs> what? it's very rude sometimes you're quite hurtful 
So, yeah, it's, at the moment he's not loving the weather. But, which is quite weird because I've took him out in the snow in the past. And he loved it. Well, I say he loved it. He, he had no choice, really, but he, because I took him out in it. But he was fine. I was going to say he didn't try and make his way back home, but he probably couldn't see where home was because all he could see was his tail <laughs> above the snow. So he had probably no idea where he was. But he seemed to be fine. He seemed to like really enjoy the process, you know. Um, I'd have thought that would be colder. It was definitely colder than it is at the moment because it's not cold yet. It's been mildly... Uh, chilly a little bit but it's January it's the middle of January I think anyone who moans about it being cold in January if they live like in this country it's like what do you expect it's supposed to be cold in fact it's probably milder where I am anyway in my part of the country it's milder than it normally is the coldness hasn't started yet Apparently it's supposed to start at the weekend with possible snow. Yeah. But other parts of the country have had snow already. Um, then you've got Scotland. Scotland had, um, I think, well, I, I'm just trying to remember the weather forecast, but I think they've had lots of uh, snow. Um, and, but I think that's kind of, Rihanna, you should tell me. Um, I've got a few Scottish friends on here. Um, let me know, is it snowing where you are? Is it snowing where you are? Rire? Is it snowing? I love snow. I'll be honest with you. I'm really honest. But I lo I'm just a complete liar, but I love snow. And the only thing that I struggle with when it comes to snow is I don't have the clothes for it. I only have one pair of shoes and they're not really suitable for anything outside of summer. And plus they've got a hole in now I um, don't know how I managed to get holes in a shoe but I think that's what happens if you just wear one pair of shoes all the time just wear them out so I need to uh, get some get some more shoes and stuff but what I do need is some Wellington boots so if it snows I can actually get out without um well, I've got, I've got these pants, well, they're trousers, but they're kind of mountaineering trousers that I bought probably about six years ago. And they're really proper, thick, um, durable, waterproof, big old things, kind of... Uh, I actually bought them from the mountain shop. I didn't, it wasn't a shop on the mountain. It was, uh, it's a shop, I think it's got the word mountain in the title of the shop. Mountain shop? Mountain trousers? I'm not sure, but it's something like that. But I bought these trousers because at the time, I was living in a very cold room, which, and it was damp, cold in the, like the cellar. So I, I've, um, I bought some clothes to sort of keep myself warm. So the trousers were good, and I also got, and um, oh, it broke. Yeah, the zip broke, but I got this. Uh, like a mountain top as well 
it was green I suppose for camouflage apart from during the winter or when you get to the point where there's snow and it was quite thick and warm with a nice a nice nice uh, jacket but the zip broke now that's a boring story wow I bought a jacket and the zip broke that's everything there's no more to say about that I did have a jacket I liked once and I went to the zip broke and it wasn't that one though and I went to a place in town which was one of these sewy places um, they sew uh, I don't know what they call them sew zips on us I suppose it's not all they do it's not the, the, the zip sewing shop it's um I think they're dry cleaners as well and they do adjustments on trousers and stuff. And they said that would be cheaper to buy a new jacket. And I said, Oh thanks. So uh, that's what I did, got a, got a new jacket. But I liked that jacket. Yeah, another time I went into Next, that's a that's a shop. Uh, I think they're still going. Um, yeah, next. And they, they were really, really popular clothes shop in the eighties, and well, probably nineties as well, but, but maybe you know twenties as well, or whatever. But anyway, they're like most retail. It's kind of it's not retail shops don't seem to be really working uh, in today's society unfortunately which is a shame because I I don't like the idea of having to buy clothes online not being able to try on trousers first really? no I don't fancy that I mean isn't that part of the reason? It's part of the good thing is you're trying on trousers and you know that firstly if they don't fit it's okay. You can try another pair on so you don't have to sort of keep them or you haven't got to wait to send them back and go through all that process. You just stick it back on the hanger. And the second good thing about it is you know that someone else is going to be wearing those trousers after you have. So I'm not saying let off a little fart. I'm just just saying that's no. I'll move on. But yeah, it's it's. But then someone else has probably tried them on before I have. I uh, uh, hope they didn't fart. So yeah, I I I need to be able to try stuff on because I've got a weird body shape, and I'm not I'm not. A, like rectangular or triangle or you know I'm not a pentathagon pentathagon is that is that a shape Pent pentatonicon um I don't know what's that uh I'm not like a blob either you know but I See, my waist measurement, I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's nothing to do with you. Nothing. I'll tell you anything else, but not that. You know, I actually had a conversation years ago. It's totally true. And probably in the 80s. Or maybe it was in the 90s. But in the 80s, I think. 87, 88, 89, 99. Maybe 91, maybe 90, maybe 80s. Anyway, I was at work and this girl, uh, she said to me, oh, she's a woman, but she was fairly young, probably about 19, 20. 
maybe a year. And she was telling me how she'd um, caught chlamydia on holiday or something like that. And, or some kind of, uh, uh, see, when I, was a, when I was a kid, we used to call it VD. But now they call it, then it called, got called STD. Isn't there another term for it now? Um, well, this conversation is going good, isn't it? STD. Let's see if there's another. STD or STDs. Okay. All right, maybe. I thought there was another, another term for it that they changed it to. Oh, no, it is. STIs. Just keep, stop changing things. And what's weird about, you know, so you might be 20 and you've grown up and that's what you've learned, STIs. And you expect people in their 40s to know what you mean when you say STIs. When they might still know STDs. And then people in their 50s, they're thinking VD. Not as, you know, that's what they used to get called. That's what we used to term it, the umbrella term. And then if you speak to someone in the 90s or 80s, it was just the umbrella term was the clap. <laughs> you know, even it was just... Uh, it's hard to keep up with all the different um, terminology. Anyway, she had one of them. And it might have been gonorrhea or I'd, I'd something anyway. And she said, Yeah, I had this and met this bloke, and I had to. And she went into a little bit more detail than I was really um, expecting to be fair so I thought I changed the subject I'm changing this is grossing me out to be it I don't really want to know um, you know there's certain things I was struggling with already um, as far as uh, bodily functions I couldn't quite get my head around so it's like I don't need more it's like no let's just Let's keep it to the minimum. So I thought I'd change the subject. So I thought, I'll talk about politics. And I said to her, uh, all right, so um, who did you vote for, for the, in the election? And she looked at me and said, that is personal. <laughs> I swear, I swear down, that's what she said. That is personal. And you may be able to imagine my response. And it was very verbal. And it involved pointing out the ridiculousness of the situation considering what she'd previously been discussing. But back then, I think... Uh, I was I wasn't careful with what I said or how I said it so yeah I don't uh, I don't think she ever spoke to me again after that I think it was I think I was 19 or 18 19 maybe I, I might have been 17 I don't know either way I was annoying I was <laughs> Sometimes, but aren't all teenagers annoying? Sometimes, I suppose all humans are, aren't they? Let's face it, all human beings. Right, telephone boxes. Let's have a quick drink. Hmm. Right. 
the reason I thought about this is because I was on my way to the farm shop and then I started talking about the farm shop but the, po the telephone box which is one of the last um, telephone boxes I've ever actually seen that was in working use has now had the telephone removed so it's just empty and there's a sign saying this telephone um, this telephone box is now closed and I'm wondering did they need to put a sign there would someone still be standing in there thinking I don't get it what what where's the phone where's the phone what's going on like and they needed that that sign oh it's closed oh okay there's no phone that's what is no phone oh lucky I need to go to the toilet then isn't it that's all the telephone boxes we use for at night anyway toilets public toilets which was mildly disgusting telephone boxes and lifts or elevators in tower blocks or council blocks honestly I used to clean council estates years ago and some of these lifts are beautiful they were the, they were really lovely lifts and the people well not everyone but um, I'd say most of the people that lived there appreciated having the lifts there because they lived very high up some of them were uh, you know uh, had uh, mobility issues so they needed the lift but even if you haven't got mobility issues carrying shopping bags of shopping up to, you know 14 set flights of stairs and stuff is not fun but every single morning I'd come in and every single lift reeked of you know that familiar smell that you get as you walk past shop doorways at six o'clock in the morning from the night before you know it's like every single time oh God. it's just be grim very grim but the lifts were lovely I'm not in love with the lifts. I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. You know. What do you keep going on about the lifts for? I'm not keep going on about it. It's the first time. Why do you call them lifts when they're elevators? Well, they're lifts. In this country, they're elevators in other countries, but we call them lifts. Just like the sidewalk is the pavement here. You know. We don't. It's, I don't know why I mean I can see it's like elevated elevator and lift doesn't even sound like the same thing until you say someone um, I elevated someone's mood I, I gave someone's mood a lift then it's like oh well it is the same thing actually it's it's kind of lifting up isn't it and so, and that's what I do. I elevate. I'm an elevator. I elevate people's moods so that they feel better, or that at least they feel glad that they're not me. And uh, so this telephone box is now closed. And 
I just feel a little bit sad, a little bit, just because it's my heritage, it's my history, not my history, but the country's history, those telephone boxes, and the original telephone boxes, or the ones that I grew up with, were red, red telephone boxes in the 70s, 80s, um, I'm saying that I don't know what year they started turning them into more like see-through uh, different kinds of boxes that they are now but yeah when did telephone boxes come to the UK a question's asked the first standard public telephone kiosk introduced by the United Kingdom Post Office was produced in concrete in 1921 and was designated K1, kiosk number one. So that's interesting. So here's a few little facts about the red telephone box, which is very famous. I mean, it's one of the things this country is known for. Uh, well, one of the nice things that this country, like one of the quaint things or cheerful things, you know, like one of the things from history, a bit like maybe... I was going to say pox, but that's not the right one. But, um, you know, there's different things like, from the past that really were popular. Um, I suppose double-decker buses, that would be one. You know, the big red double-decker buses. Were they red? Yeah, they were red. The telephone boxes and the post boxes were all red as well. Now... I think you can still get onto the big red double-decker buses in London for tourist stuff, but they're not used anymore. Those type of buses are long gone. Well, in the south, I don't know if they have them in other places. Um, I say that because when I went to uh, Manchester a few years back, they still had a tram service couldn't believe it I didn't know trams still existed outside of Amsterdam Amsterdam tram do you know it's a coincidence that it sounds similar so yeah I don't know it's uh, so I went on the tram it was pretty groovy I liked it it's like a train and a bus kind of like a train and a bus mixed together it's basically the inside's kind of like a bus the outside's like a train because it's on tracks but it stops more regularly than a train it kind of stops as often as a bus would but it's not a bus and I'm pretty sure don't they have the overwire electricity cables to keep it running and it goes like that. It's my impression of a, a tram. I might be wrong though. I, I'm really wrong, but I might, on this occasion, the first time ever, be wrong. So the telephone, the red telephone box, a telephone kiosk for a public telephone designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott. Just Giles Scott. If we need to have the Sir at the beginning, but don't need his middle name really, I don't think. It's a familiar sight on the streets of the United Kingdom, Malta, Bermuda, and Gibraltar. Is a familiar sight? No, it's not.
It says here, despite, despite a reduction in their numbers in recent years, the traditional British red kiosk can still be seen in many places throughout the UK and in current or former British colonies around the world. The colour red was frozen, chosen to make them easy to spot. <laughs> but I, I suppose that makes sense, but they are quite big. I mean, if they were yellow or green, in fact, even if they were green next to a tree, a green tree, I don't think anyone would be looking around thinking, where's the phone box? I can't see it. All I can see is this tree. No, you'd, you'd see it. Plus it has the word telephone. And it's got glass in it, you know. From 1926 onwards, the fascias of the kiosks were emblazoned with a prominent crown representing the British, British government. The red phone box is often seen as a British cultural icon. Yeah, that's what I was saying. In 2000, throughout the world, in 2006, the K2 telephone box was voted one of the Britain's top 10 design icons, which include the Mini, Supermarine Spitfire, London Tube Map, World Wide Web, Concord and the AEC Route Master Bus. Yeah, England. England uh, invented the internet. Yep. Now, uh, my question is this. And I want the answer. I don't know if I'll get the correct answer. How many are there? Because how many ah well, apparently, according to this, and this is from ofcom dot org dot u k which is um yeah, it says there are many people who rely on the UK's 67,000 public call boxes, known as call boxes or phone boxes. Ah. I don't. I've been places, I've been places, I've seen things. Why are London buses red? Well, they're not, but they used to be. The reason behind their colours dates to the early 1900s when the transport system was operated by different rival companies. London General Omnibus Company, or LGOC, owned most of the buses and in 1907 painted in its entire fleet red to stand out from competitors. And isn't that interesting that, but not, but the phone boxes were red, the buses, well in London anyway, maybe not other parts, I don't know, were red, most of them, and the post boxes were red. And Santa's house, his hat is red. Santa's hat is red. Ah. I honestly haven't seen a telephone box that works. I think there's one, one in town I think I've seen. Yeah. I'm surprised there's hardly any. I mean, I think it's good that there's at least a couple because not everybody's, you know, they might not, their mobile phone might not be working, might run out of juice, you know. But 
67,000 in the UK that seems like a bit too many I think they're fibbing I do I think they're fibbing do you have phone boxes in other countries or have they all been taken away or are they just being in, just being introduced I, you know I don't know um, that's interesting I wonder Hmm. So here's my last question. Why are telephone boxes red? Ah, oh, it is interesting. The red telephone box was the result of a competition in 1924 to design a kiosk that would be acceptable to the London Metropolitan Brothers, which had hitherto, I've never said that word out loud before, resisted the post office's effort to erect K1 kiosks on their streets. So basically, it was a result of a competition. So why are Post boxes red. We already know about the bus because the buses were red to stand out from their competition. So here it says between 1866 and 1879, the hexagon penfold post box became the standard design for pillar boxes and it was during this period that red was first adopted as the standard colour. The first boxes to be painted red were in London in July 1874, although it would be nearly 10 years before all the boxes, boxes had been repainted. That's a long time ago, isn't it? So 1874 they started painting the London post boxes red now I've lived in other places around the country and when I was a kid the post boxes were red pretty much everywhere I don't think any of them were a different colour they might have been they might not have been but they might have been I don't know. What other things were red? Um, oh, look at this. Green post boxes. Didn't know about green post boxes. Ah, oh, look. The first British pillar boxes telephone box oh, that's the post boxes the first British pillar boxes were open for use uh, for public use on Jersey on the 23rd of November 1852 shortly after the Jersey Times reported on these new boxes to its readers informed them that the boxes were painted red until 1859 when a design was standardised, local foundries were contacted to both manufacture All right, only told uh pictures beginnings in red. Ah, so look there. 
So before that, apparently they were painted green or bronze green. wasn't quite as uh, enlightening. So it says, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What other things were painted red? Uh, was Andre making a weird noise? What other things? Uh, I can't think. Of anything else. Oh, that must be everything then. How wonderful. I can't believe we've got through another hour and 16 minutes. Oh. Oh, look. Rare post boxes. UK. Look at some images. Yeah, oh, there's a black one, there's a green one, red one, yellow one in Derbyshire. There's a blue one, I like that, that's nice. There's one on the floor, actually, that's not, it's uh, falling apart. There's a gold one. Looks almost like a Dalek. <laughs> wow. There's even a rare miniature oak post box. Hampton Antiques. .co.uk is a place. Oh, I need to look into this. Maybe that's how it used to be. That it's been made of wood. Wow. That's some groovy stuff. I think I found my new hobby. Who'd have thought it would be post boxes? Anyway, I'm going to go now. Thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And I shall bore you again tomorrow. Lots of love.